All right, we've got uh, video number three. If the other one made it up, I haven't posted that yet either. Um, I'm in the middle of the rainy season. Well, not the middle of, I'm at the end of, hopefully, the rainy season here uh, in Japan, the country where I live. And uh, speaking of the rainy season, now, the first time I visited Japan, I was in university, came here for like a homestay. And, uh, oh gosh, I don't remember exactly what months it was. It was the end of the rainy season also. I was here for like two months and I was, I came to Yokohama and I remember um, every day coming out and I don't know if the climate was different then or not, but every day I'd come out and never see the sun, just overcast sky every day. And uh, one day I came out and I could see the sun. There, there was no clouds. Suddenly, like really suddenly, the rainy season was gone. And I looked and there was a big freaking Mount Fuji on, you know, plain as day, bam, right there. And, you know, I was there for like whatever, two weeks or three weeks and every day and I'd never seen it. And then after that, saw it every day. It was, it was pretty freaky. Um, all right, so uh, it won't necessarily always happen, but here's... Uh, drink for today as you can see I've been kind of practicing here for the, for the video this is some kind of a local local as in in the country uh, bourbon and uh, I'm trying to it's not so bourbony actually it's surprisingly smooth and unbourbony and recently I've been I've been really getting into that bourbon flavor so that's totori so it's it's a little bit I'm not gonna say it's a letdown but it's you know it is what it is, and uh, I'm also I'm driving a new glass today. So this is <laughs> this is an AliExpress copy of uh, some expensive whiskey glass. Like it, it leans over if you wanted to, and you know, all the fumes come out. You know, I'm not that fancy, obviously, but uh, it is what it is, right? So it it holds it holds the liquid. Yeah, just not that bourbony. That's okay. And the cigar, I'm I'm running low. Um, choice wise, I'm running low on cigars. And some people on Facebook have have offered to send me cigars. That's very nice. I should put an address up. I would gladly. I have a U.S. mailing address that forwards to here. I would gladly welcome any uh, additions that folks would like to send me, and I would dedicate a cigar online. This is a nub. It, they're I like them, man. They're, um, <clears throat> I think they're about a 55 ring size. Substantial. I like 50 to 60 ring size wise. 60 is gangster, man. That That's, yeah, it's nice. But uh, this is, uh, this is my neighbor coming in. Um, 55, it's a nub. And uh, they're not so long, obviously, as you can see. And they're, they're uh, a condensed intense experience you know so you kind of when you're burning a cigar from here you know you kind of get into a sweet spot this starts at the sweet spot and goes from there I guess for most people these last about 45 minutes I digress let me look light myself up here hold on so today uh, I wanted to talk about so I'm actually forgetting what the first of the three was, which is which is great. I love that man. I remember uh, someone telling me that you know memory is kind of a burden. <laughs> this guy was growing old. He's talking about yeah, holding on to your thoughts, holding on to anything, but including thoughts is kind of a burden that you know, that that attachment of life kind of a thing. That for for that person, him, he, he was telling me that that saying "I don't know" or "I don't remember" was a very freeing thought. Kind of like it. See how this is doing. I didn't cut it very well, actually. Yeah, I might actually cut that a bit in that. So, um, yeah, I'm not remembering so well what what I had spoken about, but what I do remember is I wanted to uh, upload and offload um, some things that for me are kind of like central uh, 
precepts, concepts of, of life for me. And uh, so last one was buyer's remorse. And, and, you know, I mean, you know, and, and a lot of people's estimation and mind superficially, that's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's just a thing. It's a business thing. But it relates to so many parts of life. And, you know, and I, uh, some days I go through day by day and I'm like, wow, you know, there it is. You know, I had a chance to, it came up successfully, unsuccessfully, affected my life, didn't affect my life. And this one affects my life as well, a lot. And so it's one of my, my pillars, pillars of uh, reality, so to speak. And uh, so I, I call, I don't call this one anything, but since, since I'm gonna put it out there, I'm gonna call it something. So I'll call it the poison carrot, something like that, the poison carrot, all right? And the carrot, pardon me, so a carrot, for sure, right, is something that hangs out in front of you and motivates you and, and moves you forward. It's a mover and a shaker in life. And a uh, poison carrot obviously means, you know, if you get to that carrot, you're not so happy. Or not for long, right? So. For me, you know, I, personally, I label this like the central injustice. One of the one of the central injustices of life, and uh, what what I see it as. Pardon me. Is there's this motivator, a mover, um, out there in front of us like a carrot, which is. Pardon me. I'll call it the easy life. Uh, some people might call it enlightenment. Uh, some people might call it being rich or uh, financially secure. Um, animals would classify it as, man, I've got all the mating I need. I've got all the food I need. I've got all the shelter I need. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to, I don't have to try. And I think... I've observed uh, in all animal kingdoms that all creatures are striving for a carrot, for a plateau, that uh, attaining that plateau is where you don't have to try anymore, right? So, you know, we're all presumably trying for financial independence or, you know, to be rich above a certain amount or be famous above a certain amount or, uh, you know, have mates, females, males, whatever it be, above a certain amount. You know, I don't have to try them there. You know, they're all there um, or whatever, famous or work-wise or business-wise or whatever. And, or effort, to just put it in, like effort or hardship, you know, to, let me say hardship, right? So, and survival in, in my uh, estimation is is driven by by hardship right so hardship hardship is the thing that that all animals all creatures avoid and yet it's the forge um, of life I mean it, it it's 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 a very unforgiving forge, right? But it, it's it's cutting away the weak. It's cutting away those who don't try or tried the wrong thing. You know, some animal, some plant experimented. You screwed up. Poof, you're gone. Uh, or you know, you you know, in in life, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, most most of us aren't going to be, you know, cut off by the by the the Darwin uh, cut force. But, um, you know, we're, we're all striving, I believe, in some way for, for something that's unattainable. And it's the unattainment of that that keeps us going. But God or deity or force forbid that we reach that plateau, that poison carrot. It's poison because attaining a state where we don't have to try anymore we're not going to be tested by adversity. We're not going to be tested by uneasiness, discomfort, 
hardship, right? It's hardship that forges the sturdy creatures that, that survive. And so, you know, <laughs> if we attain a place, like my famous example, pardon me, but, you know, Michael Jackson, you know, I mean, God knows what I would become. Uh, you know, if I attained like Michael Jackson levels of fame and fortune, money, adulation, all that, who knows what I would have ended up with. And, you know, I'm kind of drawn back to um, many of you haven't seen, some of you have, the uh, Conan the Barbarian movie where, uh, you know, Conan's there in that, in that bar and, you know, he's attained a certain level of, of success and he's just like all drunk and bloated out and fat and just like half dead and drunk at a table when he's captured by someone. And, and, and I think the line was, you know, that, that we are tested as much by success as we are by failure. And that's my drunken paraphrase. And, uh, but, but I find that very fruitful and true. So, you know, luckily for me, I haven't had to be tested by success. You know, I've, I've had a lot of hardship and, uh, but being tested by success is, you know, maybe equally, I mean, you know, just imagine if you were Michael Jackson, you know, maybe alleged pedophilia would not be the, uh, the least, the least of your transgressions are my transgressions. I don't know. You know. Who knows what I'd be doing in Thailand if, if I were of that level of success. So, a brief introduction to what I see as an injustice of life, the poison carrot. And you see it on many levels, right? So, animals, right? So, uh, any animal that, that gets to a certain amount of, of success where it doesn't have to try, it immediately starts to go to seed, right? I mean, it gets weak, um, physical weakness, mental weakness, environmental weakness. And uh, so it, it's, as I see it, it's an injustice, a cruel, ironic, interesting injustice that we're all striving for a state of being consciously or unconsciously that if we get there it's our downfall right you know and, and and you know what I very much admire people who in my estimation have reached a point like that and they've created a new resistance for themselves um, you know they, they've found uh, balance with their Abundance, right? They found um, they found a way to keep themselves striving when they've reached a place where a lot of us might just say, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm there," and whatever. Get fat, get soft, uh, you know, lose our edge. I admire that a lot, and and I've got a handful of people I hold in in my mind's eye. Who've, who've attained that and they, you know, they've gotten to that plateau, they've reached that carrot and they say, oh, you know what? I'm gonna make myself another carrot to keep myself going and keep myself fit. So I definitely, I definitely admire that. Um, I think that's it. That's all that was. It was number three. I think there's a number four. I've got it written down somewhere. Why bother myself if it's written down? Shout out if they've made it this far. Shout out to Sherry Osterhout. Shout out to John Jessup. Shout out to John Carroll. I think about you a lot, man. Shout out to Shu Sue Schmidt Crumblish. Am I saying that properly? All right. See you on the rebound. See you soon.